Okay, thank you for your patience, everyone. Uh, we're excited to uh, be coming to you live uh, from the YRC terminal as well as the OTA offices for this episode of OTA on the Air. Uh, we're very excited as we uh, continue to celebrate National Truck Driver Appreciation Week to have uh, Jeff Rose of YRC Freight uh, join us as our guest today. Uh, Jeff is our 2019 Driver of the Year winner. And uh, with that being said, we're just really happy that we were able to crown him in person last month. Uh, we actually had to postpone the event, I, I think twice before we were able to have it, but uh, luckily uh, the governor's guidelines allowed for us to uh, make that a possibility. And we're just very excited to have uh, Jeff with us today. I've got a quick bio uh, about Jeff. Uh, a lot of it is is from his uh, from his terminal manager, I believe, uh, Eric Lucas up at YRC Freight. Uh, he used uh, some of these kind words uh, about Jeff at the uh, at the Driver of the Year uh, nomination uh, ceremony. Uh, so we're we're again just really happy to have him with us. So I'm going to go through Jeff's quick bio so that everyone on today's webinar and uh, folks that will be watching later on the recorded version. We'll uh, be able to get to know Jeff a little bit, and then we'll get into our uh, Q&A dialogue. Uh, before that, I do just want to encourage everybody, if you do have questions directly for Jeff, uh, we will be um, addressing those at the end of the webinar. Uh, just please use either the chat feature or the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. Uh, so with uh, no further ado, uh, Jeff is a consummate uh, professional, he spends his hours uh, off the clock taking calls at just about any time from YRC drivers and peers in the industry. He's been with YRC for over 28 years and has been driving for over 36. Uh, he's been out on the open road, America's highways, um, and he's also been in the arena, if you will, uh, competing in a number of different truck driving ch class championships, uh, winning a variety of different uh, TDC championships in Ohio and competing on a national level at the NTDC or National Truck Driving uh, Championships, excuse me. Uh, Jeff has been married to his wife for 32 years. Uh, though not a Ohio native, uh, he is actually from Colorado. Uh, he now calls uh, Ohio home. Um, he moved here in nine, 1997. And uh, you know what we call hills in the state of Ohio, Jeff calls speed bumps, according to uh, to uh, Eric. So uh, I like that uh, being a West Virginia guy myself. I, I can appreciate uh, that. So uh, anyway, he goes above and beyond using creative touches like visual aids and illustrations to help make safety demonstrations and, and classes more interactive and meaningful for the y YRC Freight team. He is trained in some capacity or another over 2,400 employees at y YRC. Whether it's construction zones, gate checks, safety inspections, or the Smith safety system, Jeff can be counted on to get you trained and ready for the road. To this day, Jeff helps YRC with new employee and current employee certifications of the Smith system. He is a regular at the Ohio State Fair where he teaches loyal fair goers and the motoring public about truck safety and awareness at the no zone display. If you haven't gone, uh, please check out the no zone uh, at the fair um, I will say that I believe that's where I first met Jeff back in 2017, and it, it is just a really special interactive display, and it gives you just a greater appreciation for what the road is like from a, a, from a driver perspective. So uh, in closing, some think that uh, if you're with the Ohio State Highway Patrol uh, too often, or if they know you on a first name basis, that that's not a good thing, but uh, in Jeff's case, it's the opposite as he has fostered a relationship with the State Highway Patrol here in Ohio. And uh, he and other YRC freight team members go as far as teaching classes with the patrol and regularly um, exchanging ideas to help each other in the industry accomplish safety goals when it comes to um, you know, yearly inspections and audits and things of that nature, which we'll be talking a little bit more about later on. He's truly a spokesperson for the industry, preaching safety and pre preventative education measures uh, no matter where he goes, and we're so happy to uh, have with us the 2019 Driver of the Year, um, Jeffrey Rose. So, Jeff, if you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself or just, uh, you know, again, just uh, kind of enter in, introduce yourself outside some of those remarks, um, we'd be happy to have it, and then we'll get, get into the Q&A. Okay. Thank you, Evan. Uh, I appreciate you and everyone that has uh, signed on and having me here today. Uh, like you said, I'm originally from Colorado. 
been driving 36 years. Uh, Ohio is my home now. Uh, been here, well, 23 years, and my family just loves it out here, and we've been welcomed very well by the industry out here. And uh, I do have over, you know, 3.6 million miles accident-free. And that's awesome. That's awesome. That's quite the accomplishment. Uh, the, the men recognized driver of the year in total, I believe had 33 and a half million safe miles. And, you know, to, to have you credited with 3.6 million of those is, is just absolutely uh, inspiring and kind of puts, puts you in awe because you think about definitely in today's society, how often we see folks at a red light checking their phone, driving down the interstate checking their phone or what have you. I mean, it's just uh, the highways have become even more dangerous, I'm sure, since you've you've started. So uh, congrats and, and uh, we appreciate that safety mindset uh, that, that you bring to ensuring that not only your team, but also, you know, just generally that the motoring public, as we mentioned, is safe. Right. Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a challenge anymore with all the distractions and you know, everybody's in such a hurry anymore, it seems like, and, you know, it's just like, you know, you got to drive for you and everybody else anymore, it seems like, so you got to really be on top of your game. Right, right. You're absolutely right. Uh, everyone is in a hurry. Everyone, I think everyone tries to beat the GPS, you know, it's, <laughs> this is your estimated time of arrival, right. and, uh, you know, can, can you get there three minutes faster? So, nevertheless, we'll jump into things. I, I, I'd love uh, to be able to show some of the folks joining us today, uh, or have you show anyway. I, I saw it earlier uh, when we were getting acquainted, your, your ring. We'd love to know, you know, how it feels it to, to be. Yeah, it looks awesome. It's good on you. Uh, we'd love to know just your feeling on, you know, what it's like to be OTA Driver of the Year for 2019. You know, you were recognized by your company, the panel of judges, which included uh, State Highway Patrol, um, representative PUCO, representative in, in the Bureau of Workers' Compensation. So, you know, tell us a little bit about how it, how that feels and is it extra weight on your shoulder or is it a relief off your shoulder? You, you've been nominated a number of times. Well, it's kind of a combination. I mean, it's a relief off my shoulders now I know I've got it. <laughs> but yeah. it puts more weight on my shoulders because now I got one step up that, you know, I got to stay above every everything on all my game even more because of that. Right. But, you know, I mean, it feels great. I mean, it's definitely an honor to be recognized as Ohio Driver of the Year. Um, you know, again, I, I, I'd like to thank YRC for backing me and giving me all the resources, you know, to be able to promote and teach, you know, not just to our drivers, but the motoring public and everybody can go home safe there at the end of the day. Plus, you know, I'd, I'd also like to thank all the judges because I can't imagine being a judge on that selection panel that, with the 12 finalists that was there. That, that couldn't have been an easy decision, just the caliber of, drivers in that room you're right and and honestly this this year was um this year we had the most drivers that we've had um i think ever uh, nominated for the award i think we had uh well over 50 so to all those watching uh we hope that you will uh, nominate one of your drivers in the future we really love celebrating those folks and and just right it, it's it's definitely uh difficult uh, because there's a ton of talented and safety focused people but um yeah congrats again jeff we're, we're happy to have you representing the the ohio uh driver of the year uh, mantle for for this year and like you said uh, you wear that crown forever it's it's uh it's just so we're, we're excited to, to have you a part of that uh that ring of honor if you will so right. so what is your favorite part uh about being a professional driver what, what, what's your favorite memory what's your favorite thing that you do every day uh you know what's the best part of, of being a driver uh, in, in today's day and age yeah i mean my favorite part you know i'm, I'm kind of my own boss so you know being my own boss, you know, I'm, I'm out on the open road and, you know, getting it from point A to point B and back to point A as safely as possible, you know, it, it's gratifying to me because everything that I can see on the roads and just kind of do like my own business. But, you know, when I get back to point A again, you know, knowing that I'm still, you know, keeping America moving forward. Mm -hmm. Especially at these times and days with the everything that's going on and you know 
people are realizing how much how essential we really are mm -hmm. and that's just it, it's that's what i like about my job is being able to you know move everything across the roads and just you know it's uh just gratifying to my whole career has been that way just i look forward to it every day of going up and down that road and just enjoying everything that's in my sights mm -hmm. Well, as the old adage goes, I don't know if I'll get it right, but uh, it, it's if you wake up doing something you love every day, then then it's not a job. So uh, that that's sounds like that that's where you're at. And I would imagine some days are always harder than others, but it sounds like more often than not, you're pretty happy doing what you're doing. So from, you talk about going from point A to point B. So just to, again, familiarize the audience with you a little bit. What 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 lanes and routes are you normally driving? And, and where are you, what terminal are you more often than not working out of? Well, I'm on, I'm on what they call an open turn run. So I just do turns every day, just kind of varies from day to day. Uh, you know, I do roughly about 600 mile turn. I do, you know, go across I-80, uh, the turnpikes a lot. You know, I, I go a lot to Carlisle, PA, uh, South Bend, Indiana. You know, I go up into Michigan some. But uh, it's just kind of a variety. I, I like doing the variety. It gives you kind of breaks up, get to see a different road every day, but yet I'm still, you know, come home every day. So yeah, yeah, it's a spice of life, if you will. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think if you're driving the same route every day, I mean, I'm sure there's some advantages to that. You get to know some of the habits and things, but it's nice to see, like you said, some different roads, maybe some different fields along the interstate, uh, maybe try out a new, uh, you know, a new. Uh, rest rest facility uh, or what have you you're not doing the same exact thing every day you're getting a little bit uh, a little bit of variation anyway as far as the road goes obviously it's different every day but uh, so you know you, you mentioned uh, a little bit about the the world the United States the, the the different communities that we are working in and representing the the industry in and how they're starting to see the essential nature of transportation now more than ever. So as far as pickups and deliveries are concerned, you know, have they been any different during COVID-19? Have you been, have you had the opportunity to haul some of those so-called essential COVID supplies? Yeah, I mean, things have changed a little bit. You know, I, I'm a line haul driver, so I don't do any city pickups. I mean, I'll drop trailers off at a customer and pick up trailers, but even as far as that goes, you know, some of our customers, before we pull into their yard, they even do a drop and hook, I have to get my temperature taken. And we do have to wear a mask if we're outside of the truck. So that, that's been the biggest things I've come across as far as changes. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're all trying to keep everyone safe throughout this whole pandemic. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, talk to some of the city drivers and they pretty much say the same thing as far as doing city pickups, you know, temperature checks and masks, that seems to be their biggest biggest things um you know as far as products yeah we we haul a lot of essential products you know we've done a lot of hand sanitizer and definitely a lot of paper products and you know uh as an ltl carrier we we just about you know carry anything and everything mm -hmm. and you know in reality you know it, it is if it is brought to you you know or you buy it it's been on a truck somewhere down the road. Yeah. So yeah, pretty absolutely. much, you know, everything's almost essential anymore. You know. Right. So, right. But yeah, we you know we've done a lot of high essential stuff. Yeah, I had lunch with someone yesterday, and it was really just refreshing to hear them uh, say uh, we were sitting a, a, on a, on a patio outside, socially distanced, and uh, taking taking things responsibly. Uh, as has been mandated and, and it was refreshing to hear them say that you know we, we wouldn't be here eating taking part uh in you know this lunch if it weren't for you know the men and women that, that, that are out there moving goods i mean it and and they went as far as break the whole supply chain down they said hey the gas yeah. wouldn't be in your car to get there you, you, your yeah. car wouldn't have been at the dealership for you to buy i mean they broke it all down so it's just Refreshing to, to hear that and see that people are truly, uh, you know, seeing again that essential essential nature of what uh, what the industry does, and and I hope that we can continue to to 
bring folks like you on, Jeff, to, to kind of illustrate, you know, how important that role is. So, you know, we have a couple safety folks on, on the line today. And, and one of the, the things that our safety driven um, organization really likes to hear about is, you know, that driver engagement piece. I hear from a lot of our members, recruitment retention is, is one of the big issues. So from your perspective, what do you consider to be key in that recruitment and engagement and, and retention of, of good drivers like yourself? Well, I mean, I, I believe in, you know, the key to recruiting is being honest with a new driver. You know, if they're, you know, misinformed right off, you know, that's gonna give them a, a wrong outlook on the industry right away. So, you know, the more honest we can be when we hire drivers, you know, the better off they're going to stay, want to stay with the company, you know. And I believe, you know, that 18, 18 to 20 year old drivers start driving interstate is going to help a, a lot. You know, the military, you know, they, they give this age group that responsibility. And I believe that, you know, they can step up and be responsible. Uh, you know, again, young people, you know, don't want to wait till they're 21 to start a career. You know, we get a lot of farm kids, you know, they drive trucks on the farms and that's what they want to do when they graduate. But, mm -hmm. you know, to go long haul, they can't do it. So, you know, college ain't for, is not for everybody, you know, a young person out there, uh, you know, trucking is a great career option. Having a mentorship program in a company, you know, would help a new driver become more confident with themselves and have a positive start to their career. So I think, you know, if companies can have get their mentorships programs going and start a new driver off on the right foot, but they're gonna stay with a company and they're gonna be a happy being in the industry. Mm -hmm. and, and you're right, honesty is the best policy. I mean, things change, uh, of course, but honesty is the best policy. You, you mentioned young drivers. I was at uh, a career and technical school up in Northeast Ohio, uh, Mahoning County, and the, the young, young gentleman came up to me after I talked a little bit about, you know, industry exposure and, and the need for drivers and technicians in our industry. And the, the young, young gentleman told me, hey, I, I want to do this. I, I've been doing it. Uh, so, you know, we need to give them the opportunity to do it like you said though so that's something that we're working on i know that's something some of the something that some of the national organizations are working on so we're hopeful we're hopeful so you mentioned mentorship though uh you know we did a video um where we interviewed all the finalists and um at the drive of the year banquet one of your answers really struck me and, and that was the mentorship piece so i'm glad you bring it up I think mentorship in any industry is, is key to longevity. So tell me a little bit about some of your mentors, maybe some of your mentees, uh, and what that program could look like for some of the people on the call that, that are exploring new options for a mentorship program. Well, my dad, he was my mentor. And, uh, you know, he drove truck for over 30 years. And, you know, he, he always instilled in me, you know, the importance of safety and that safety starts with me. So, you know, I always, like I told you guys down at the banquet, you know, an old mentor isn't better than no mentor at all. So, and there's, there's plenty of older, older experienced drivers out here that would love to pass, pass on their knowledge to a younger beginning driver. But, you know, my dad, he had an excellent safety record and I saw, it, you know, the pride that he took in his record when I was growing up. So, but you know, sadly I lost him about three years ago. And Mike Hathaway became a wonderful friend and a mentor to me, you know, Mike for a long time. And, uh, you know, he, like my dad, never met a stranger. I mean, him, he met, him and my dad met first time in 2017. And you would have swore they were brothers, you know, mm -hmm. same attitude and same everything, joke around with everybody, but they were both good mentors. Uh, you know, Mike, they both always had words of encouragement for everyone, no matter who they come across. They always had, uh, you know, for the industry, always talked real highly of, you know, everything and gave new drivers encouragement. Uh, you know, I want to carry on the standard of those who, you know, have come before me 
and have shown me what you know how it goes on in the industry and how to to go on safely and still learning and i'm happy to share my knowledge and experience and that you know a lot of companies got drivers just like that they like i said love to share their experiences and you know and i believe that's critical to have a mentorship program in place you know it helps open communication gives new drivers uh reassurance and uh you know it also those things lead to a safe workplace mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we talk a lot about mentorship programs and some of the volunteer organizations that I'm a part of, whether uh, it's professional or even you know personal volunteer uh, efforts. And uh, I think a lot of people, and correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of people say, uh, you know, mentorships are, are too technical. You know, that I don't have time to get lunch with somebody once a week or get you know be on the phone with somebody once a week, but. I think we oftentimes forget that it's not about doing it once a week. Sometimes it's just a matter of doing it once a month or once every right. other month. Uh, just to say, hey, check in. How are you doing? You know, how are things going? How's that route treating you? How is, you know, how's the relationship with, you know, with your family at home? You know, sometimes those things leak over in the professional life, whether we want them to or not. So I think that that's probably key. And, and I'm sure you've experienced a lot of that with the, with the young men and women that you've had the opportunity to work with or engage with. Right. Yeah. And you're right. You know, just, just a phone call once a month or every other week, just to see how they're doing. It makes a big difference on a new driver. You know, I'm, I get my number out right away. I told them, you know, anytime day or night, give me a call, you know, uh, and like I said, a lot of drivers out there that are, even if they don't work for your company, they're willing to help each other no matter what company you work for. Mm -hmm. And that's the nice thing about it is, especially our industry, you know, 3.6 million drivers. There's a lot of miles, a lot of experience out here. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of drivers that would love to pass on their knowledge. And you've probably said it to me as well, but I know the most powerful thing uh, that, that anyone ever said to me about TDC the truck driving championships here in Ohio was Tim Livingston uh, from Martin Welch Transportation, a FedEx contractor. Uh, he he said to said to me um, at one of my first TDCs, he says it's not about the the winning or the losing. That's that's nice. Uh, you know, we'd like to win. Obviously, we want to win. But he said, you know, what really drives me to either compete, volunteer, or have my my drivers volunteer is the opportunity for us to to connect the drivers and, and develop some of these relationships like you just mentioned and have a mentorship uh, or a mentor, you know, kind of enter into some of these younger or, or kind of middle of the middle of their career drivers. And then they come back with just a completely changed mindset. And so, I th yeah, I think that's a good reminder. I never thought about external relationships like that, uh, but shameless plug for our truck driving championships, I guess, but uh, you know, it's, it's awesome. And it's just like you said, the TDCs, I mean, it's, I tell everybody, that's like my second family. You know, you, you can't wait to go back every year. So that's why you, you want to drive safe all year and get back there. Just, right. so you, you know, you can see, you know, drivers that you haven't seen for a year, but you talk to them, but you don't really get to see them. And, you know, like I said, I got friendships with all the different guy, drivers from other companies and we, we call and talk and give each other ideas and, uh, you know, we come up with some safety thing, we'll, we'll call each other and say, hey, you know, have you heard this or whatever? And, you know, it's a good relationship all the way around in, you know, in our industry. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'm glad we got to dive a little bit into that. I know that, you know, mentorships are important. Like I said, uh, whenever I kind of pose this question is, is they're, they're important to longevity and important in any industry, but, uh, you know, th these are some good takeaways. So, you know, we, we heard in your bio uh, a lot about how par paramount, excuse me, that the safety is to our industry. You know, tell me what you define as safety culture and how we as an industry can continue to encourage safety is, is a top priority to drivers of all of all ages. Well, you know, of course, safety is, is my number one. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, I want everyone to go home healthy and happy and be able to spend time with their families and friends. Uh, to me, you know, it, it starts off with getting proper rest. Uh, you know, you also got to be mentally, physically, and emotionally prepared before you get, get in that truck. And, uh, you know, like an athlete, you have to be, have to have your mind in the game. 
So, you know, your equipment, you know, you gotta be inspected thoroughly, you know, for any defects that could cause you any issues on the road. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's been my experience that hands-on visuals and, you know, demos draw in the drivers and get them thinking, you know, they don't see stuff for a while, they, they start getting lax and but as soon as you bring them back out, they're like, oh, well, you know, good reminder, you know, mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, not like gate checks, like I told you before, you know, we do gate checks where we stop our drivers at the gate, just to make sure they, you know, didn't miss something on their truck, just kind of, you know, a second set of eyes doing an inspection, you know, can go a long ways, especially with your newer drivers. We like taking our new drivers, taking them out and putting them with the gate checks, and they learn a lot from that. And they carry that on into their everyday driving, you know, so it's, it's, it's all, you know, it's a, it's a new learning opportunity for driver of all ages for like the stuff that we do as far as gate checks and demos and because I still have drivers have been here you know 40 years saying wow I didn't know that you know mm -hmm. so as a driver you know we never stop learning and, you know the day I stop learning is the day I better retire <laughs> <laughs> every day is different you know all right Right. You know, I, I've heard that from a very young age, uh, you know, if, if you stop learning, you, you better start trying harder. So it's, it's, uh, uh that's a good reminder uh, to, to everyone. And, and some of those examples of how, how you all have done it is really important. So continuing uh, down the safety, uh, safety path, you know, safety is key, regardless of, of COVID-19, but we, we know, and we've heard a lot about some of the different roadside inspection protocols having changed because of the pandemic and less opportunities to be hands on one or, or you know with the driver in close proximity due to you know not wanting to, to spread the virus so have you noticed or discussed any of, of these inspection changes with the state highway patrol or um again just seeing it hands on are there any differences that you can think of that, that work or don't work or that even you know that the audience today should be aware of well, unfortunately, you know, with this COVID, we haven't had the opportunities to be involved with, uh, you know, Ohio State Patrol this whole year. So, uh, you know, personally, I haven't been inspected since all this has come about. So I really don't have any much of the knowledge of how they've really changed. You know, it's all new territory and we all need to, you know, remember to be courteous and respectful. That's probably gonna be the biggest thing you know, that I've heard, you know, which is always, drivers should always be courteous and respectful to a, you know, a motor carrier or whoever that has them inspecting them. But, you know, safety is always one priority regardless of COVID or anything else. So just, you know, like I said, I haven't heard much drivers that have been inspected say it hasn't really changed much, just, you know. Okay. They just kind of keeping a little more distance versus climbing up on the truck like sometimes they do or but just the, the courteous part i think is what they really want because you know everybody's got a lot of tension over this and so everybody you know i think just needs to kind of stay calm and we'll all get through this mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. i appreciate that and i think that it's it, it's good to hear that a lot of the requirements haven't changed either. It's just a matter of, you know, again, being a little bit more uh, aware of how close in proximity maybe we are or, or what have you. So, uh, or again, just being courteous and kind. So I'm gonna ask one final question. Um, and, and we talked a little bit about this as we were prepping to get on today. Uh, and, and I'll just give a final reminder that if, if you have any questions uh, prior uh, to the end of this webinar, we'd really appreciate if you'd put them either in the, in the chat feature or the uh, Q&A feature of, of, the, uh, of the toolbar on the bottom. But my final question, uh, Jeff, you know, you've been in the industry for 35 plus years, you've driven 3.6 million safe miles and, you know, it, but, but the industry's likely change so much uh, due to the the addition of some of the different technologies. We talked about a few of them again as we were going through our practice run through um, earlier this morning. Would, would you mind kind of sharing some of, uh, you know, some of that experience either as the driver or even the trainer and how, you know, we can continue to, to get buy-in to continue again uh, to, to create a safer industry? 
Well, I think a lot of the, the technology that's come out in the trucks nowadays, I mean, being in the industry as long as I have, you know, I've seen a lot of change go from no power steering to power steering, and now we got trucks trying to drive themselves. Uh, you know, the lane departure, the crash mitigation systems, it took a little bit getting used to. Uh, I'm gonna lie, it's, it, was a, it was a learning curve at first, but I like them now. Now I'm used to them. You know, like your lane departures, I found in the fog, when it's kind of foggy out, it'll detect that line over there if you, you know, which which is a good, a good safety option. Uh, you know, the ELDs, again, that was a big learning curve for everybody. Uh, I really like them. Most guys are starting to like them better. You know, they said they would never, never want them. And now then drivers say, well, I'm glad we got these. These are nice. You know, mm -hmm. and it makes your job easier, uh, you know. But the technology, I mean, for the most part, it, it, it is making them safer trucks, safer on the roads. And, uh, you know, especially if like we were saying, you know, for all the distractions and stuff, I've seen where, you know, it, it's gonna help in them. You know, we were talking earlier about how the distance monitor, you get too close at, you know, our you know, trucks will almost come to a stop if somebody cuts you off and it, you know, if you're not on top of your game and you get a driver, you know, it it, it could save a, a life or an accident there. And it's just a matter of getting used to the stuff. I mean, it's got a little bit of stuff that still needs to be worked out on them. But overall, uh, you know, I think they're working pretty good and I think they're headed in the right direction as far as that stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I appreciate you sharing that uh, because even I myself as a, as a public motor motorist, um, not a commercial driver. I, uh, I'm one that I was telling you, Jeff, again, when we were going through a practice run through, I, it's taken me almost six months to get used to my new car and some of those things. So I can only imagine someone who's doing it every day. I mean, it's, it is a change and it takes learning and buy-in and just saying, okay, this is, you know, this is here to, to make me uh, safer. Uh, but doesn't mean that it's always going to be easy or it's going to happen overnight either. And I think that's uh, just a good reminder um so anything else that you wanted to cover i don't have any questions that have come in here in the last few minutes of us chatting but is there anything else you wanted to cover today or wanted to share with the audience that uh that you know, may, may be helpful to them as safety professionals or uh, driver recruiters or driver and hr managers uh no i mean just you know like i said on the recruiting you know let's 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 start these drivers off with a good attitude and good you know, let's it's, it's be honest with re recruiting and uh, that'll go a long ways on helping the driver shortage. Uh, you know, as far as that, you know, a lot of companies have started changing how their runs work so they get drivers home more. And, you know, that's helped a lot too, as far as the recruiting part. You know, and I just wanna also, you know, thank all the, the companies, everybody that's kind of appreciate all these drivers this week and you know tell them thank you that's that thank you goes a long ways you know even that even though we can't shake hands right now but even a you know fist bump or an elbow bump whatever and telling the driver you know great job they get in that truck they leave with a smile knowing they gotta appreciate it and you know i appreciate what my company does for me I think that's an important reminder uh a fist bump a handshake a thank you knowing someone's name it goes a long way, and I think it's important as we continue to navigate the, you know, the the workforce problem that all industries are facing. Again, this isn't just transportation; it, it's a lot of industries that that we collaborate with that, that we're facing the workforce development issue. And uh, a hello, a greeting, a handshake, a fist bump, what have you, uh, it goes a long way. So. Again, on behalf of the Ohio Trucking Association, we are so uh, you know so proud and so thankful to have a representative like Jeff as our 2019 Driver of the Year. Uh, he will be uh, in in this uh, seat as as Driver of the Year until 2020. So this may not be the last time, or until 2021, excuse me. So this may not be the last time that uh, that you see Jeff uh, either on a webinar or, or at an event that that you register for. So uh, if we're able to have him, we we would love to again, but. Uh, and with that being said, Jeff, I'll give you the final word here, uh, but I just wanted to say thanks again. All right, Evan, thank you. And like I said, thanks everybody for having me here. And 
it's, it's, a, it's a true honor to, to have this title. And I always uh, usually leave a, a message with everybody, even though it's becoming an end of winter, but uh, a little safety message I always say is behind every rolling ball is a child. So if you're out driving around, just remember little things like that can uh, make everything, everybody safer knowing something's behind that ball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. That's an important reminder. Uh, I thank you for sharing it and thank you for just sharing some of your experiences here with us today. I thank all the attendees for joining us today and supporting uh, Jeff Rose and the National Truck Driver Appreciation Week that we're, that we're continuing to promote. Uh, please check out our social media for more information or more highlights from some of our drivers uh, that uh, were at the Driver of the Year ceremony as well as at uh, our TDC events in the past. So thank you again, Jeff. I appreciate it. And I hope to uh, see many of you on our next uh, OT on the Air episode. Thank you. Thanks, Evan.